What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Trey Jones. Today I'm going to be giving you five anxiety recovery mistakes. Go ahead and smash that like button down below if you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt. Leave me a comment guys. Today's question of the day, how many pets do you have and what are they? Okay, this is more of a distraction type question of the day. I'm going to throw in some distraction questions every once in a while just to kind of get us out of the realm of thinking of anxiety you know, just to distract us, okay, if you will. So for me, guys, unfortunately, I'm renting this home and I'm not allowed to have pets at all. They are ultra serious about that. I can't even do a pet deposit. Um, I've asked if there's any exceptions, can't do that. But I love dogs. Uh, whenever I was a kid, we raised boxers. Um, you know, we did that whole thing, that whole shindig, and it, it, it was fun. I loved it. So I grew up loving dogs. Cats are growing on me, even though I'm allergic to them. I'm very, very allergic, but uh, I like having them kind of around. They're good at keeping pests away and stuff too. So let us know what your favorite pets are or how many you have exactly and then what they are, okay? So down below. I will be picking two of you guys for a shout out in next video if you answer that question and if you're subscribed to my channel. So I have two shout outs today. First one, big shout out to Cassie Henry. I still remember our talk, Cassie. I hope you're doing great and moving forward with your recovery. Um, I just wish the best for you. And Natalie Robb, thank you so much for answering the question last week, or uh, a couple days ago, excuse me. It was my last video. <laughs> and thank you for answering that and being proactive. Okay, thank you so much. So guys, today, five anxiety recovery mistakes. Yes, whenever we are in recovery, we can still make mistakes. Recovery is, is a great thing, okay? You have a lot of good days, and the idea is to have more good days than bad. It's momentum, you're feeling good. What happens whenever we feel good? A lot of times we start to just kind of chill out, all right? And that brings me to my first thing, and it's becoming too chill in recovery. Thinking that, I got this, this is good, you know what I mean? I've been working out, I've been meditating, I've been eating right, um, I've been doing my meditation. I think I'm back to normal, man. I think I'm just gonna not necessarily go back to what I was doing, but I'm not gonna be like hard on this. I'm not gonna be like super pro. If I miss this uh, scheduled meditation or if I don't go see my therapist this week, you know what I mean? If you're skipping out on these good habits that you created, all right? Bad things can happen, all right? So you have to understand that you're still gonna have some bad days in recovery, but becoming chill in recovery is not a good idea. Okay, because you're one relapse away from having a bad week. That bad week can turn into a bad two weeks, and we've all been there, this horrible freaking cycle, right? Um, so when it comes to recovery, it's how we handle the bad days. So becoming too chill in recovery is a dangerous thing. Keep being proactive, all right? Keep being proactive. You have to keep your foot on anxiety's neck until the deed is done. And I say this all the time, anxiety doesn't take breaks with you, so stop taking breaks with it. Right? This is a new lifestyle. This is a new you, right? So don't take a break from the new you. This is how you're going to move on with your life. The next one, guys, is a big one too. Relying and waiting on external motivation. External meaning relying on somebody else to pump you up uh, via video, books, um, you know, music, things like that. Just something from an external source. Okay, the idea is we learn how to self-motivate and that takes practice and time and patience. Um, we have to be our own best friend. We have to show ourselves self-love. If you think about it, I was talking to somebody today, we're kind of like verbally abusive to our subconscious. Like, you're weak, you suck, you're, God, why can't I just get over this? You know, we're saying some horrible stuff. How is, how is our subconscious mind gonna cure from that? You know, be, get over this, recover from anxiety. It's not, we're telling it horrible things. We gotta give ourselves positive affirmations. So that's how you can start self-motivating. But if you're just waiting on that book, if you're just waiting for that one video to do everything for you, you're going to be disappointed, okay? You have to be proactive, which means you have to actually take action. I tell my coaching clients, because I know a lot of them do get pumped up, they do get motivated whenever we talk, but I just know that in two or three days down the road, the motivation is going to wear off. It's just natural, it's human nature, that's how it works. I wish motivation could last for a long time. There are a few people out there where it probably works a little bit better, but for most of us, it doesn't last, especially if we're getting it from an external source. So I tell them, look, right now, you need to be taking action, okay? Take action regardless, and then you'll learn how to self-motivate. You'll see results from your actions, and that'll help you with motivation, okay? You'll be motivated from your own results, and that's what I want you to do. 
Guys, the next one is not being patient with your recovery, okay? So you're doing a few things, things are kind of looking good and you're still having setbacks. Guys, this takes a long time. Rewiring your brain, reprogramming your thought process is not an easy thing. It takes time. It takes time. So many of you are doing meditation for a week and then you're like, eh, it didn't work for me, that's not good. Or you do positive affirmations for a few days. Eh, I didn't feel that much better whenever I did them. Dude, you've done them for like three days. Or you've done it for like a week. You've been a ne negative thinker, if not your whole life, but for the last five, six, seven, X amount of years that you've been dealing with this, and you expect one meditation session or a week of doing positive affirmations to completely change everything. Same goes towards exercise or diet. Guys, this takes time. You have to build new habits. You have to build a new lifestyle, a new routine. This stuff takes time. Stop expecting a simple diet change or a session with a therapist, um, even just one coaching call to do everything for you. It takes time, all right? Habit, routine, lifestyle, okay? It takes time. Our subconscious mind is basically 80% of us. This is just some made up stats by me, okay? So don't mind me. Um, consciously, for instance, I believe like we're like 15, 20% here, okay? But, you know, 80% of us, I believe, is in our subconscious. It's so deep, it's in depth, it carries a lot of weight, okay? So consciously, we have to keep trying to remind our subconscious mind like, I know you're still kind of in control, but look, this is the direction that I wanna go in. That's why you have to create a new habit, right? It takes time to create a habit. You have to keep basically getting your subconscious mind to trust you. So just doing these things on a daily basis, it's super, super important, but it takes time. We all know it takes time to, to get in shape, right? To have those six pack or to be wealthy or to start your own business. For most of us, it takes a long time. The same thing goes for your mental health. Those people have to rewire their brain for success just like you do. So be patient. The next one, guys, is going back to old habits. It, it kind of relates with the first one, becoming too chill, but this is actually going back to the destructive stuff, like if you were a drinker, okay? Don't expect to just, because you're seeing some good results, you can go back to just drinking every day and that's gonna be fine. No. Anxiety, a lot of times, is a sign that you need to grow as a person. So until you grow and make those lifestyle changes and move on from that and don't go back, your subconscious mind is gonna constantly remind you and scream at you via these symptoms or panic attacks as something is not right. Something is not settling right with your subconscious. So do you think going back to old habits, okay, whenever you were dealing with anxiety or what led to it is gonna do anything for you? No. So why go and drink alcohol again if you know the next day your anxiety is gonna be freaking horrible? Or smoke cigarettes? Or do drugs? or stay inside all day, or stop traveling, or, or stop doing the new hobbies that you've created from trying to be proactive and, and, and do better with your anxiety recovery. Do not go back to old destructive habits. You are a new person, you are growing, you're recovering, you're moving forward. There's better things out there for you. Don't go back to the old you. Obviously that wasn't working for you and it led to the anxiety. And last but not least, you're not doing a lot of things at one time. And I say this all the freaking time. One tool is amazing, right? A hammer is a great tool. So we'll say meditation is a hammer. That's a great tool, right? But is that gonna build a tree house? No, it's not, okay? A trumpet is a beautiful instrument, all right? We could say positive affirmations is a trumpet. But is that a symphony? No. A lot of tools, a lot of instruments, you can make a masterpiece. You can make a tree house. You can have a symphony, an orchestra. Okay, you have a band. <laughs> so realize that just doing one thing may not cut it and probably won't. So some of you will do this. You will be like, oh, I hear that CBD oil is cool for anxiety. So you'll literally just take CBD oil, but you won't do anything else. And you're waiting on that. Once you see that CBD oil isn't enough, you stop using CBD oil. And then you say, oh, I'll start eating right. So then you get on a diet and you start eating what you think is right for your anxiety, which probably would be right if you followed some good guidelines or got some good info from a good source. And you're doing that for a while. 
and then you realize like, look, I, I feel slightly better, but not much better. So whatever, I, I, I'm gonna go back to my comfort food. So you stop doing that. Then you move to exercise. Then you go to meditation. So you're doing one thing at a time. Whenever, if you just would start out with doing three, four, five, six things all at once, you'd see much better results. Your chances of doing better would be higher. And guys, the strategy that I give with my online, uh, online, with my coaching calls, one-on-one -on -one coaching, there are tons of tools that towards the end of my recovery, I was doing all together. And that's what it takes, doing a lot of different things. It's a lifestyle. These are not chores, this isn't homework, none of that. It's the new me. Remember I said anxiety is a sign that we need to grow? I needed to grow, and until I changed and started doing things differently, I wasn't going to recover. So guys, try many different things together. Do the diet and the exercise with the meditation, with the affirmations. On the side, be seeing a life coach or a therapist, all right? Preferably both. <laughs> and make sure that you're getting everything together, okay? Doing everything at once together is much, much better. You're gonna have greater odds to overcome this. So guys, I hope you got value. Recovery is a great place to be, but you can still make some mistakes. You can still have some setbacks. Remember, it's all about how we handle the bad days. It's easy to get through a good day, right? But when these symptoms hit, if you have a, a relapse panic attack, guys, it's how you react to it that matters, okay? So just keep that in mind. There's so many resources down below. Guys, if you wanted to do some online coaching with me and that's something that you're interested, interested in, interested, my email is down below in the description and it's in the first pinned comment. So don't hesitate to reach out to me so we can set something up. Also, if you haven't seen a therapist, that's probably something that you should do, especially if you're wanting to be diagnosed or to deal with uh, medication. Down below, online therapy is available. You can do it on the phone, laptop, PC. Um, you can do it on your couch so you don't have to leave or anything. So it's very, very convenient and it's cheaper than normal therapy. So you can do it right here on the phone. Um, there are other resources down below, so check those out, including my tips for anxiety. Guys, I give those in every video. Some of you are either that you don't know they're there, or you refuse to go down there and check them out. I mean, we gotta be proactive here, okay? That's what I'm saying. You can't just sit around expecting anxiety to leave because it's not gonna do that. We gotta do some things, we gotta rewire, we gotta change the way that we think. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell next to it so you get updates whenever I put these videos out, very important. Um, also remember, like this video if you got value and leave a comment. The question of the day is how many pets do you have and what are they? All right, I'm gonna be picking two people to give a shout out to. Until next time, guys, keep fighting. I love you all, and um, I should see you tomorrow.